You know what I was thinking about? I was thinking about how Cavalax is an attack-based nuker-type champion, right? But uh, nobody's complaining about him requiring accuracy. Where is he? Because uh, Cal, he needs accuracy to do his poisons. Attack-based champion. Uh, he's supposed to nuke. He's got an EMHP move. Uh, he places poisons, and these require uh, accuracy, but nobody's complaining about him needing accuracy. Um, yeah, just a thought on Thor there. But um, this is what I'm going to be doing today. I'm doing live arena because quite a few of you actually enjoy me doing live arena. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing today. And uh, hopefully this loads because, okay, part of the reason I'm doing live arena right now is because I'm still stuck on this. Equip a champion with six zeal artifacts. Well, guess what, guys? Six live arena chests later. And still, no boots. Six, guys. Six. I need one more piece. No boots. Can you believe that? So, if you're about to do this mission, I highly recommend you uh, save it. Save your uh, boots or save at least one piece of each for both impulse and zeal. Because you could end up in my situation needing a perfect set and you just don't have it. It just freaking sucks, but yeah. All right, so you guys already know how I do. Um, I basically just take a bunch of L's. I purposely drop. And yeah, make sure I get the absolutely easy fights that don't take long because I hate live arena. Don't like doing it. I hate doing it. I wasn't doing live arena. I wasn't doing live arena until Marius said, hey, you need to do live arena. Now, if any of you guys are wondering, Burrito, you have the the roster of a five-year player, pay to win, but have the rating of a four-month player. Yeah, that's what happens when you don't use live arena tokens. That's, that's, that's what happens when you don't do live arena. It's the same thing if, like, I learned a language and I stopped using the language. You know, I'm, I'm going to speak like a four-year-old learning the language, in case you're wondering. It's kind of obvious, I think. All right. Who should we ban? I'm thinking we ban Snow White. I'm drinking bourbon today. I'm drinking bourbon. And uh, I, don't, I don't normally drink bourbon. I'm not a bourbon guy because the, <laughs> it's actually pretty stupid. So when I was in the military, I uh, I got blasted with one of my buddies at his house. It was um, you know just a, not 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 a whole party, just kind of like a small get together. And there was a, I bought a bottle of Knob Creek, which is a hundred proof, right? So high alcohol content. It's bourbon. Again, I normally drink. Let me just throw this on auto here so I can focus. I normally drink whiskey, Irish whiskey. I mean, bourbon is whiskey. But I usually drink Irish, and I usually drink Scottish whiskey, right? So Scotch and, uh, you know, Jameson or anything there of that sort. I'm not accustomed to drinking bourbon. And the reason is because during that party, or I guess after that party I realized, but during that party I had Knob Creek. One of the first times that I've had bourbon, and I blacked out. Everybody was telling me, like, hey, burrito, I don't know why, but after a while, you just started, like, getting kind of weird. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? They were like, dude, I don't know. You were running all over the place. You jumped on top of a gate, and you sat on the gate. Like, you just sat on the gate. And I was like, what do you mean I sat on the gate? And they were like, well, you had one leg on both sides of the gate. And I don't know. You were just sitting there. And I was like, really? But I didn't remember any of this stuff like I was completely blacked out and this other guy was like yeah dude uh you just randomly started telling us like I have mommy issues and then you stopped and turned around and went and daddy issues <laughs> I was like what bro <laughs> so um ever since then I, I didn't drink I haven't had bourbon in a while the, the truth is I just can't handle bourbon you know some of you guys out there might be like oh you know I drink bourbon and everything's all fine and dandy right there but for me, no. Nah, I mean, I can drink. I can drink 
Irish and, and Scotch all night long till the next day. But you put a little bit of bourbon in me, it's game over. It's a wrap. I'm gone for the day, bro. It's over. This one time we had um, Tennessee whiskey. It was, um, where was I? Of course, it was back in the military. Uh, I just turned 18. I mean, I just turned 21. And we went to a house party. And so everybody gets around the table and they're like, hey, you know, welcome to the newcomers because I just arrived at my new command. And so we're having this house party and they, they bring out Fireball Whiskey. All right. Uh, was it Tennessee? No, no, no. It was Fireball Whiskey. I, I can't remember if it's Tennessee uh, specific or, or whatever it is, but it was Fireball. That's the brand. I, I, I know the brand. I don't like it. It's got this weird cinnamon, cinnamon taste to it. And um, I don't know. It just doesn't, it doesn't go down smoothly enough. And I just don't like it. Case, case in point, after drinking that, what had happened that night was I got into a fight with a Marine. I don't know why. I don't know how. But you guys know how it is. You know, you got, you got, you got guys, you got girls in a house, in a party. Everybody's drinking. And, you know, when everybody's drinking, especially when you're in the military, you kind of just go with the flow of everything. So a couple fights popped off that night and I got into one of them with a Marine. Bro, I ended up freaking throwing this this Marine freaking picked me up. He picked me up and smashed me through the glass table in the living room. And um, I still have like a, a scar on my or scars, small scars, not nothing serious um, on my back. But it was one of those like, how do I explain it? It was, um, hold on, let me just throw these guys in. It was one of those glass tables that had like, now I'm 18, by the way. So of course my body can handle it, but now I still kind of feel the effects of it today. But, um, what's it called? Yeah. It was one of those tables where it has like nothing in the center of it, but it's like, how do I explain it? Can I even like show you? I don't even know how to articulate, but basically it's being held up the focal points are at the edges of the table. So there's like nothing in the middle of the glass table. It's just the glass table empty in the middle. And then, um, you know, he, he basically picked me up, threw me there after we exchanged uh, a few uh, altercational hits. I don't know how to explain it. We hit each other a few times, then he picked me up and then threw me there. And then, I, of course, what had happened after that was uh, this girl, her name was, um, what's her name? We weren't dating or anything. What was her name? Brianna. This girl, Brianna, redhead. She pulls me, she pulls me up. She's like, oh my God, rum or, um, burrito. Like, what the fuck are you doing? And so I'm like, I don't know. I need another beer. Like uh, the, the pain wasn't even registering with me. Like it, it wasn't. It wasn't until like the next day that I saw the bruise or like felt the pain in my back or the aches. I was just like, I just need another beer. And everybody was like, Woo! So, um, of course it didn't, it didn't get heated or anything because it wasn't like, cause you know how when you're at a party and you start throwing hands with somebody because it's like personal or anything. Well, this wasn't really personal. It was kind of just like, it was just the mood, right? It was just the vibe. And I wasn't the only one that got into a fight that time. Uh, these other two Marines took out knives and started doing some knife play. Like, just, it was really fucking stupid. One of them got sent to the hospital, got driven to medical. Um, but yeah, they they pulled me out. She was like, you're done. You're done. We're, we're calling you. Uh, we're we're going to take you back to the barracks. So they put me in this room. And they're, like, keeping the alcohol away from me. They're like, no, cut him off. And people are trying to come in through the door. They're like, hey give him another beer. He needs another beer. Burrito needs another beer. And I'm like, hell yeah, bro. Give me another beer. I miss Chelsea. Uh, there was a girl at the time. Her name was, was Chelsea. I love my wife, by the way, but, but, uh, there was a girl back then. And, um, I was like, yeah, give me another beer. And so I'm listening to like old voice record or voicemails of, uh, of, you know, the, the girl at the time. And, um, Bri uh, Brianna was like, no, don't give him any more. He's done. And so she kicks them out, but there's a window right next to the bed. So I'm sitting on the bed and <laughs> these fuckers, these, these guys freaking open the window 
and sneak me in a a beer. It was a it was a Jack and Coke or not not a Jack and Coke. It was a beer. Jack and Coke came later, uh, but they st- they stuck me in a beer. I don't remember exactly what the beer was. They're like, hey, drink this shotgun. So I shotgun that, and then she Brianna like smacks that shit out of my hand, and she's like, no, what the fuck is wrong with you? And so um later. Uh, after like laying down on the bed for for a while, uh, it was it was just me, Brianna, uh, not in the same bed. She was sitting on the edge, and then the, um, I think uh, another guy named Timothy was was in the room also. And so um, finally, my chain of command comes through, and they're like, "All right, dude, you're, you're out. We're taking you back to the barracks." So picks me up, like literally picks me up because I'm too like dumb and drunk to to freaking do anything to even walk. Picks me up, throws me in the back of the truck right well in that exact moment after he throws me in the back of the truck and closes the door i immediately and we're in, we're in washington state by the way so we're in washington state and um well, let me hit this and we're out in the middle of nowhere where it's just a bunch of like trees basically it's it's the forest it's the pacific northwest damn it damn ai and so in that exact moment i opened up the door the door and then i i leave I get out of the truck and I run into the force. <laughs> and so um, I can kind of hear what's going on behind me or freaking the, uh, the guy who came to get me is like, well, where the fuck did he go? Where's burrito? <laughs> and then, um, basically they had to do a mini search party for me. They're like, Oh my God, like we can't find him in the house. I'm hiding behind a tree thinking this shit's funny. And so uh, everybody's kind of getting kind of getting mad at this point. Some people are still thinking it's funny, but the people who uh, are responsible for me because if anything bad happens, it's on their head, are of course, understandably so, a little bit perturbed and perplexed by the situation at hand when they have a drunk old me uh, lost in the forest. So um, eventually, I come out of the forest like like I'm just giggling like ha 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 ha, uh, and they're like. You're fucking done. And then the guy who came to get me was like, you know what? This is a fucking waste of time. I'm out of here. I'm done. So he leaves. I go back inside. Um, these other guys, uh, two Marines, one sailor, comes through uh, over to me. And they're like, hey, man, you want some uh, Jack and Coke? And I'm like, you're darn, you're, you're darn right I do. So they fucking give me. And it was still in this, in this, um, it was like. It's like one of those regular paper cups that you get. Like if you go to the movie theaters, for an example, and you ask for like a soda, you know that that paper cup with the plastic straw and everything. Yeah, it was in one of those. So they gave me Jack and Coke in one of those, and I kept drinking. And I forgot how the night ended, but everything ended up all right, and I, I was fine. So yeah, uh, don't know how we ended up in that story. Don't know how I keep getting matched up with this guy. But uh, yeah, that's my my story as to why I don't drink bourbon and why I don't drink Tennessee whiskey. In fact, I guess we could just chalk it up to I don't drink American whiskey anymore, for the most part. Don't know why. It just doesn't one. It doesn't taste right. Like I'm drinking this bourbon right now because uh, Labor Day weekend, uh, family came over and we had steaks and they brought alcohol and this is what they brought and I was like, all right, cool. Alcohol's alcohol at the end of the day. You know, whiskey is whiskey, truth water is truth water. So we're drinking, we're drinking. I'll be right back. I'm getting really thirsty. But yeah, what are some, uh, I'd be interested. I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one. I know there's some veterans here. I know there's some people who served. I know you got some crazy stories. <laughs> Either you're the one that did it or you're the one that experienced it, but let me know. You know what? Fuck it. Let's talk more about some some stuff that happened in the military. Not not everything, but let's see what I can remember. I'll try to keep it drinking <laughs> related. This one's not that funny. It's actually kind of fucked up, right? So there was this, and this is honestly kind of sad. There was this guy in the military. He was an E6. He was an E6. 
and he was going through some shit, right? So his wife was divorcing him. I'm not going to use any names here, but, you know, this is just a story. His wife was divorcing him, right? And, uh, you know, who should we pick? Let's bring Pixneo. Let's bring, let's bring ally attack champions in. So, uh, his wife was divorcing him and she was taking the kids with him. And this was a really nice, like he was a super nice guy. Always took care of his, his, uh, <clears throat> always took care of his people. Really, really smart guy, like head on his shoulders and everything. Always kept his head on a swivel. Really, um, reliable when it came to his job. And um, so this starts happening and the guy starts getting like into alcohol. Like you, I'm talking about like he wasn't against drinking or anything. It's, it's not like he was was not obviously you're in the military. I, there weren't too many people who didn't drink. But, you know, this was a guy who we, we all knew and like he didn't really drink all that much just just because. But he started like delving more into alcohol. I'm talking like because he would tell us later on, right? He, he he told us later what was going on, and so he was talking about like, oh, I went through a 24 pack, and it's fucking nine o'clock in the morning, and we're like, dude, what are you doing here at work? And he's just like, and you can smell this shit on him too. So he's drinking. He's he was drinking beer. He, he's like, oh, um, this one time. And the reason this entire conversation came up is because he walked into the shop and he was swaying and you can, you could smell the shit on him, right? You could smell the alcohol in him. He's like, oh, I just went through a 24 pack. And it was weird because for a guy who didn't really drink that much, um, he showed up, right? So we thought it was kind of weird that he slammed a 24 pack and then came to work. Well, and again, again, this was really not smart for us but me i was a lower classman uh you know uh younger i didn't really have rank or anything so it's not like it was my place to say i wasn't going to tell an e6 what to do but basically like he ended up going to the flight line and we, i was in aviation by the way uh he ended up going to the flight line to go catch a jet or to go um uh how do i explain it in simple terms when i say catch a jet Sometimes, or when we were doing flight ops, flight operations, a jet would come back from doing their quote unquote practice run or whatever it is. And when they came back, there was something called plane captains. And a plane captain is basically somebody who works as somebody who brings in the jet, makes sure that nothing's wrong with the jet, and properly parks the jet. And so it's, it's a simplified thing what I just explained, but basically he was the one catching a jet this time. And so, um, knowing this, knowing that he had come in with a 24 pack, I don't know why my senior officers didn't say or do anything. Cause he looked fine. Right. I mean, other than this, other than the swaying and the stench on him, like he, he kind of looked okay. Right. I shit you not, bro. We're all on the flight line and the jet starts coming. This motherfucker, dude, out of nowhere, like he he starts performing the plane captain um, procedures as normal and then just drops to the floor, like just drops to the floor, like face face flat. Luckily, he had his helmet on and he just falls forward and like he faints. So uh, the, the um, another plane captain immediately rushes to the scene, takes over the jet and we have two guys come and pick this guy up and drag him, drag him away. He's still unconscious, but we... Um, I'm watching this happen. I'm not, I'm not actually there, but like they drag him off and they, uh, they take him. And so, uh, then we get a, a meeting later on talking about what, what had happened in the shop. And then we get a meeting later on, uh, talking about basically alcohol, alcohol abuse, alcohol consumption, how there are, uh, so many avenues that you can take when you're in the military. If you're going through anything that you can basically see somebody to get the help that you guys that you guys need and you know it's true you know there are programs there's people you can talk to in the military and even after the military with the VA uh, that's gotten better over the years um in if you're having any type of mental issues right and this guy unfortunately was going through some shit losing his wife and kids and he dev devolved into alcohol and like that was a scary situation like imagine if 
this was on like the flight deck when you're on a ship or maybe the jet had started moving forward and almost i don't think it was going to run over him because you know the officers the the the, cap, the pilots are you know cognizant of these things but just like just imagine he just like fainted out of nowhere it was it was wild bro like it happened in a split second and so uh later on we we talk about everything and you know over the span of the next few weeks he tells us what's going on and everything that's happened that he'd been drinking nonstop uh just to numb the pain it's really sad like he was a cool guy a really good guy one of the fir- um, one of the first guys i i met when i showed up to the command uh walked me around introduced me made me feel feel all good and he he'd always been that way with with a lot of people but to see that happen over over um over you know family tragedy trauma whatever you want to call it and then alcohol is just crazy um but yeah no that was that was pretty sad that was a god damn dude i hope he's okay uh he lost rank uh, but they didn't like kick him out of the military or anything. They they forced him basically to go get help. Uh, Twelve weeks of therapy. Uh, he did Alcohols Anonymous. Dude, I'm just spouting this guy's business on the internet. It, it's fine. Uh, it's been it's been over a decade. I th- I'm pretty sure everything's okay. Uh, no names were divulged. Divulged by <laughs> What Am I saying right now? Let's see here. Let's bring in you. Get rid of you. Decay. But yeah, that was pretty insane. Uh, I'm interested to uh, I'm interested to hear your guys' story, stories. Okay. They always ban Armands, and whenever they don't ban Armands, they get ganked. It's a tough situation. You know, sometimes I miss the military. Like, uh, cause I joined when I was 18, like straight out of high school, basically. I know well, most people, right? Most people just join straight out of high school, but I joined, um, not because of any like particular reason. I mean, like I, I, I thought about like, oh, you know, fight for my country. And I think what the, the biggest thing that motivated me, motivated me was, um movies i don't know in the movies especially if you're in america you see the glorification of military in a lot of military movies i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that because i'm always like you know let's you know fucking america fuck yeah you know i'm all about it and i have obviously obviously nothing against military I, i'm i'm all about the military like you served you're my brother i don't give a shit where you're from uh, you don't even have to be american military you can be you know military from i don't know britain or korea or, or wherever and like i'll treat you as a fucking brother that's just the way that it is because a lot of civilians don't know what it is to um you know, experience the military, to go through the military. Like, yeah, you might know somebody, you might read stories, you might um, hear about it. Maybe you're a military brat and, you know, maybe you've heard some stories from your from your family. But it's just like, unless you've been through it yourself, I'll be honest with you, you don't you don't know. And I'm not saying like you're, you're not as good or, or whatever you want to call it. I'm just I'm just explaining like you, you just don't know. Um, and, it's, and it's not your fault. I'm not saying anything badly about it. But that's part of the reason why, if you're ever wondering why a military has so much camaraderie or why veterans have so much camaraderie, that's the reason behind it. Like, without saying words, as soon as you, as soon as you can even see or just get a whiff or even sense that somebody's military, you just feel this instant connection um, with them. And that, that's just the way that it is. And it's a good thing. I think, I, you know, I, I love it. I love it. And, uh, you know, if you end up joining like the police force, because, because after the military, <laughs> yeah, I fucked up this guy's plans. He chose UDK because he was going to cho- uh, choose Rodos next. A lot of, pe- a lot of military people, veterans, after they join, after they, uh, finish their time in the military, a lot of them join the police force because it's like the easiest thing to transition over into. Right. Once, and I, I'm explaining this because I was about to become a cop after I got out of the military because that was like the easiest thing. 
Because once they see that you're ex-military, yeah, I fought this guy before. Once they see you're ex-military, they're like, okay, we don't have to train this guy so much or get him, get him initiated. He already knows the fucking drill. Like he knows chain of command. He knows standard operating procedures. He knows the rules, the regulations. He knows how to, um, you know, keep up with basically everything. We won't have to teach that guy. And you kind of you get points, right? You get a points when you're signing up to be a cop, when you take the test and everything. And and it's it's pretty much the same thing, right? But you know, as much as I loved the military, there's also a, a hate relationship to it, and it's it's kind of hard to explain. It's like a lot of m veterans that I've that I've talked to. A lot of military people, like you hate it, but you love it at the same time. And you miss it when you're when you're done with it. It's weird. Can't really explain it. Never really stopped to think about it. But that that's just just that's just what it is. So yeah. But uh, circling back to why I joined, uh, you know, part of it was because of love of country. I wanted to fight for my country. I wanted to serve, um, and a lot of that stemmed from the glorification of the military and military pride in American movies. And uh, the other half of the reason was because I wanted to get away. I wanted to explore the world. I wanted to get out from under my, my parents' roof and see what that was like. And uh, yeah, I basically joined for those reasons and, you know, I got what I wanted. And it was fun. It was a, it was a great experience. Just like every other veteran out there, if I could do it again, I'd join Air Force. <laughs> I would join Air Force if I could do it again. Every time I talk to a veteran, every, everybody always says that. Like, oh man, if I could do it again, I'd join Air Force. Reason being is because Air Force is like the, the third, fourth child of Uncle Sam. Because they get everything. They get all the good shit. And they, get, they technically kind of get paid more. Like... I remember Air Force people coming over to to our base, or like Air Force people would tell us like, "Oh, we went to the we were we were on a de detachment over at the uh, at the um, at the Army base, and we were actually getting per diem because it wasn't up to uh, Air Force standards." <laughs> I thought that shit was wild, bro. I was like, "God damn!" But yeah. It's cake. And every time I would see the Air Force people work out doing PT, man, you have the Marines carrying fucking logs, like thousand pound logs. I'm not fucking lying to you either. Like you would see these Marines on some nuts, crazy shit, picking up a giant ass log. And I'm not talking about like one or two Marines. I'm talking about like, I don't know, 20 of them all picking up one giant log and holding it up over their heads. I shit you not, dude, that shit was fucking wild, bro. You got the army guys doing their push-ups and everything. You got the uh, the the sailors doing their running and whatnot. Uh, and then you have the Air Force people throwing a fucking frisbee. I can't make this shit up, bro. I'm not making this shit up. But like that was some actual shit that was going down. Oh, God damn, I missed the military. The uh, I was talking. I talked I talked to uh, my wife about this earlier today cuz we went out this morning. We went out for uh we went on a date, coffee date, went to the uh bookstore, walked around um looked at different restaurants and everything. And um we were actually talking about the military, which is I I guess is explaining why I have the military on my mind right now. Uh and I forgot where I was going with this. Damn it. Where was I? What was I? What was I saying? I need more whiskey. I'll be back. <laughs> oh shit! Let me let me just pick some characters real quick. Let me see if I can remember what I was talking about. Oh, here, let's do just blue champions. Only blue champions. They have to be blue. Like their face has to be blue. So we'll choose Mithrala and Rodos. I don't have to worry about Pixneal because I know nobody's gonna pick Pixneal. Does this count? Does Ninja count as blue? I, don't, I think Ramatu counts though. Pixneo. Who's got a blue face? Hold up. Let's see here. Oh, Gurgo, but Gurgo's not built. That wouldn't be fair to Oh here uh I don't think he's built either though. Ninja? Who's got a blue face? Samson's not built. 
I think Ramatu is the only one that's built out of these guys. So it's got to be Ramatu. Uh, let's get rid of Androk. No mythicals around here. He's like, what the fuck is this? Why is he choose? What what is this? What is this? What are these choices here? What are these choices here? These don't make any sense. These don't make any sense. You're right, Bala. It doesn't. Damn, I need to get more whiskey. How's your guys' week going? How's your Labor Day going? All of you guys are on stone skin? Oh my gosh. Well, that's not cool. Ugh. Oh, wait. There's a Hefrag there. I probably shouldn't... Uh... Come on, do your A2, bro. Hurry up. Boom. 35k. Come on, Pixneal. Put in some work. Come on, Hefrag. Do your thing. Nice, bro. Good job. Nice hit. That was a good hit. Good on you. I hate going up against lower level uh, lower level accounts because, like, sometimes these guys are low account levels, but I promise you, sometimes, dude, like, they just, they just smack. I can't tell you how many times I've gone up against, like, um, freaking, uh, like, a level 77, and he's just got mythicals up the ass. And I'm like, bro, what the heck? Like, what? Or he's got, like, really, really good gear. I had a level 68 outspeed my Arbiter once. Granted, my Arbiter isn't really fast. She's like 3, I don't know, 320, 330, something like that. She's she's slow, all right? Really, really slow. And uh, he outsped me. I was like, wait, what? I was not expecting that. It was crazy. All right, I'll be back. I'm going to get more whiskey. Oh, fuck. Okay. Is it me or is it hot in here? It's hot, right? I gotta turn the AC on. Sunohi. Alright, so picking just blue characters did not work. Let's pick... Okay, if I pick all support champions, that's not gonna be any fun. So let's do... Just defense-based champions only. Yeah, let's do that. Just defense only. I actually don't know if my Staltus Dragonbane's built. I think we'll find out. We'll, let's, let's find out if he's built or not. Oh, the next one I should do? Just epic champions, that's it. Just epics. Oh, UDK. I have UDK also. You guys ever build UDK for damage? I saw one guy in, in one of my clans build him out for damage. Like, straight nuker build. I was like, wait, what? Nuke UDK? Nuke DK? You guys ever do that? This would be a really good idea to stream, I think. Just because, like, I'm asking you guys questions and nobody can obviously respond because... Oh, shit, my bad. Um... Nobody can respond because it, this is just a recording, but I mean, the the reason why I'm not streaming so much right now is because my Wi-Fi honestly is pretty shitty right now. And because it's pretty shitty, it makes me not want to stream for fear of internet cutting out and like I'm midstream and it just flops on me. This guy's going to be a dick, dude. Fuck, dude. 
Why you take your time? So why do people take their time, dude? Maybe he was thinking. Maybe he was thinking. All right. So I don't know if Dragon Staltus Staltus is built, but let, let's see. I don't think he's built. He got resisted, and yeah, he's definitely not built, bro. He's not built, bro. Let's get rid of Valkyrie. Damn, so I'm in here with a Staltus that's not built. That's crazy. Come on, guys. <laughs> so, so um, for a while I was doing keto, right? And so keto is basically like no sugar, low carbs, or you know, you try to you try to get your best, um, you do your best to get to that point. And so I was like, okay, well, if I'm gonna be keto, how am I gonna drink alcohol? Did you guys know, vodka, vodka, is actually keto friendly? Vodka is a alcohol that's keto friendly. There's another alcohol, uh, there's a beer that I particularly like. It's called um, Michelob Ultra. Michelob Ultra is uh, like less than 100 calories, no, basically no carbs, no sugar. And that's one I really like. The, the issue with that one, with Michelob, is that it's it doesn't hit, kind of. Like you have to... It, I don't. I don't feel anything. Is is what I'm trying to say, right? And I think overall, I'm just gonna stick to whiskey. I don't really like beer. I don't like beer because beer makes me feel bloated for the most part, and I don't like it. But I I do like beer in a social context. Like we can go out to the to the bar, and I'm totally fine drinking beers. But if I'm at home, I don't think I like it anymore. I don't. I don't think I enjoy drinking beers at home. But I'm totally down with drinking whiskey. I'm a I'm a I'm a quiet drinker nowadays, right? I'm I'm getting old. I'm pushing 40 in about 10 years. And I just don't like going out. I don't like going to the clubs or anything like that. I just want to sit at home, play video games, hang out with my wife and my cats, and just chill and drink. And just vibe, right? I'm not really down for taking shots at that <laughs> club like that anymore. Um, you know, if that's your thing, that's totally cool. It's just, it's just not me. But yeah, I didn't know vodka was uh, keto friendly. Did I pick Armand's? Oh shit, Armand's is right there. Hmm. Hey, we gotta talk about Godforge. We gotta talk about Godforge, dude. What are you guys thinking about Godforge? I'm gonna get rid of you. Um, so I'm seeing stuff about Godforge, right? I'm seeing the characters, the inside looks and everything, character designs. And I gotta be, I gotta be a hundred with you. I've gotta keep it a buck. No cap. No lie. Aesthetically, I don't know if it's really my speed. Aesthetically, I don't really know if that's my thing. Are you gonna take your time? What are you doing, Trost99? Aesthetically, I don't I don't really know if that's like it's a year out, right? Darren was talking to me in the comments about like, oh, it's gonna be a year out before Godforge comes um to be able to be played. Uh if if that, because you know how games are, sometimes it just takes longer. And I'm I'm uh I'm seeing everything here that they're presenting, and I don't know, it's just not really like it doesn't look like maybe I'm just so used to raid this guy again. But I'm not really like feeling the whole vibe i don't know what it is but i i want to right i want to to like it i want to support the game i want to support it because you know hell hate. okay so he's gonna he's gonna be sticking he's sticking he's sticking all the way okay I want to support... Fuck, dude. Just leave in the beginning. What are you doing, bro? It's because I ruined his plans again. He's like, oh, I was going to fucking choose Rodos. <laughs> but yeah, Godforge. Like, I'm I'm excited for it. In the sense that, like, I, I want to see if it's going to be a good game. Because, you know, it's Hell Hades and the entire team. 
But someone else in, in the comments of another video that I put out was like, just because it's Hell Hades doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a good game. I mean, uh, he was like, the guy doesn't really have any business making um, or like putting together a game other than he's a content creator for a really big game. And I was like, yeah, but I think he's got some some insight. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like he's he's going to be a good representation of the entire community in the sense that he'll be able to, I guess, better relate to the wants and needs of the community. That's that's my whole thing. That that's what I'm thinking, and um, that should be more than enough, right? Because it's not just Hell Hades; it's an entire crew of people. Like you got Ash. You've got like everybody's everybody who's here on doing raid, you know, not me because I'm just not big, but like everybody's there talking about it on that team, giving insight. I mean, Chosen's one of the main dudes there right now, right? And he came from raid. But yeah, aesthetically, I don't know. What do you guys think about God Forge? Is it something that you're going to play? I know a lot of people are going to play because they say it looks fun. Um, I'm going to obviously give it a chance, give it a try, because I, I, I can't judge a book based on its cover. But aesthetically, it's just not really, you know, enticing to me. Please give me a boot, damn it. Six chests. Six.